When I review Google Ads accounts, I'm still amazed at how many people are not actively split testing their headlines and ad copies in Google Ads. And the reason for this is because split testing your ad copies is one of the fastest ways to not only increase your click-through ratios, but also increase your conversion rates and lower those acquisition costs that you're seeing in your Google Ads campaigns. Now, yes, I understand Google's learning is getting better and better, but having said that, despite all the improvements that Google has made in its learning, you will still get faster results through running regular and scheduled split testing of your ad copies. And the core reason for this is because for Google to be able to properly complete its split testing, it needs somewhere between 2,000 to 5,000 impressions in a 30-day period. Now, as little as 12 months ago, that was at 5,000 impressions. We are getting some indications that that, in some cases, that that can be down to around about 2,000 impressions in a 30-day period. But the problem is still being is that if you're running a small budget, you may not get those 2,000 impressions on a single ad in a 30-day period in order to be able to see that conclusive data from Google. And that is why split testing is highly important because when you carry this out over a 30 day period, you're able to look at the data and find out what was giving you the best click through ratio and the best conversion rates, keep that ad in your campaign and then set another test. And I've seen cases where we've run this out over a three month period and we've seen some massive increases in the total performance of that account. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through the exact process that I use for my split testing, which is time and time again, seen results like this, where on a monthly basis, we were able to take up the click-through ratio from 8.79% to it peaking up to 20.25% and then constantly being above 16%, with that conversion rate also increasing from 7.14% all the way up to peaking at 15% and then regularly seeing conversion rates above 12% and then also seeing that improvement in the cost per conversion, where it was originally up at 65 and now it's coming down to $31, $29, and $34 over the last three months. So if you too would like to see results like that in your own Google Ads campaign, I want you to now stick around because I'm gonna show you the exact process that I use for split testing my ads in Google Ads. And to clarify, I'm gonna take you through the process that I use for both Google Search and also Performance Max campaigns. But before I show you that step-by-step -step process of setting up those split tests, I wanna take you through the important core principles that you need to use when you're split testing ads in Google Ads. And the first principle is, is that you only wanna be testing one thing at a time. And what I mean by that is that when you're running a split test, you wanna have two ads that are pretty much identical except they have one core difference. And that core difference could be having your keyword focus pinned into position one, where the other ad doesn't have that pinned in position one, or you could have two ads which are exactly the same with the only difference being that they have a different call to action. And the reason for why this is so important that you only have one core difference is so that you know exactly what has made the positive or the negative difference. For example, a current split test which I'm running in one of our accounts is looking at the difference with the call to action as to whether we put in a price or just a general call for a quote. So we've got one headline which is saying prices start from just $54. And then we've got another headline which is saying call us for a free quote today. And apart from that difference in the call to action, every other aspect of our headlines and descriptions are exactly the same. So we've structured it in such a way that after the next 30 days, we'll have a very clear understanding of whether the market responds to a call to action with a price in it or just a general call us for a quote. So the first core principle for running your split tests in the right way is that you need to make sure that you've only got one core difference that you're testing between your two ads. And the second core principle is that you need to make sure that you're reviewing enough data. And that's mainly by reviewing the amount of impressions that you have. Now, in an ideal world, I like to see two ads which at least have a thousand impressions each. Now, one of those ads, especially if it was the previous winner, may have like five or 6,000 impressions, but as long as that second ad has about a thousand impressions, I'm happy to draw that comparison. Now, if you're running a smaller account and you're just not gonna be getting that many impressions, what you can do is you can just set a time limit and just say, I'm gonna review this 
after 30 days. And then what you can do is that you can break down those differences over a seven day period. So you can look at the last four weeks and start to see if there's been any changes over, especially the last seven or 14 days. And that will give you some early indications of whether you can finish that split test or whether you need to run it for another 30 days. So after you've made sure that you're only testing one thing at a certain time, and then you've also made sure that you're reviewing enough data, the next third important principle for correctly running your split tests in Google Ads is to make sure that you have a clear process and a system to be able to review and record the different split tests that you've run. Because remembering we're wanting to do this on a regular basis. So you wanna make sure that split tests that you've done in, for example, this month in February, that you're not carrying out those same split tests six months from now. So you wanna make sure that you've got information and an easy way that you can quickly go through and review the previous split tests that you have done. And then that brings us to our fourth important point and principle about split testing in Google Ads is that you need to understand that this is a constant ongoing process. You will never have a time where you've completely finished all of your split testing. And I'm recommending that you're going through and doing this split testing every 30 to 60 days. So for those core principles of split testing, make sure that you're only testing one thing at a time. You then wanna make sure that you've got clear data to review. Thirdly, you wanna make sure that you've got a clear process for recording the different split tests that you've done. And then fourth and finally, you wanna make sure that you have an understanding that split testing is an ongoing process and that you never really stop it and you should always be scheduling these split tests in every 30 or 60 days. So right now with all of that said, let me now take you through another screen share so I can show you how to firstly complete the split testing process for your search campaigns, and then I'll show you how you can complete them for your Performance Max campaigns. Let's go. So let's start with your Google search campaigns. So where we wanna be going is you wanna select the campaign that you wanna be going into, which is this one here for us then go into one of your ad groups. And then from there, you go into your ads and assets. So for my search campaigns, the way that I go through and I record so that I can see the different changes that I've made and the different testings that I've done, what I always do is that I keep all of this data in Google Ads. And the way that you do that is that when you've completed a round of split testing, so let's just say we've got these two ads in here that we're doing a split test on. And let's look at the last 30 days. And over the last 30 days, we can sit here and see that this top ad is the clear winner. And the reason for that, it's got a higher click-through ratio and it's also been providing all of those conversions. Now, as we can see here, this bottom one doesn't have as much data. So just to confirm that, what we can do is we can go back to the last sort of about 66 weeks and we can see there that this data is going through, that this conversion rate is a good 2% higher or 2.5% higher. And we're also seeing a much better cost per conversion. So even when we go out to a longer date range, we can see that this top ad has the better performance. And the only difference between these two ads is that this ad has that request a free demo, whereas this other ad has the price in that third headline where it's saying from just $54 a month. So we know from this split test is that this top one is performing better where we just give a general request a quote as opposed to mentioning our price. So what I would do in here to set up another split test is I would select this ad, press copy, and then I'd paste that ad right into the same ad group. And then we just need to make sure that we are selecting this option, which is if the ad already exists, create duplicate. And then once that ad is then pasted in there, which will appear soon, what we go through and do is then we pause this underperforming ad, go into the new ad, and then from there, we would go through and change this call to action so that we can add in another split test. And by following this process, by not removing those ads, what it is allows us to do is that inbuilt into our Google Ads history, we can see here the different results. So obviously we're seeing only the last 30 days, so all the data's not there. But if we go back and pull out a longer date range, we can see here we've got all of those core data. So we've got the click-through ratio, we've got the conversion rates, and also those cost per conversion. So at any time, I can go back and see the different split tests that we've run in our search campaign. Campaign. So that's how we complete it in a search campaign. When we go to Performance Max, it does run a little bit differently. And how it runs in Performance Max is that with Performance Max, 
we can only have one ad in individual asset groups. So when you're in Performance Max, you go to your campaign, go to your asset groups. We then wanna go through and click View Details. So not edit assets, go to view details. And then from there, you get these scores from Google, which is best, low, good. And what you wanna be doing is you wanna be going through any of these headlines which have a low performance and you wanna go through and change them. So for this one in here, we click edit. This is the one with the low performance. We copy that out and then we can go through and add in another headline. But obviously the difference with your Performance Max campaign is that you don't see that previous data. So the process that I've put in place so that I can go through and review the different headlines that have been used is that I go in and I create my own Google Sheet. And what we do here is that we can see all of the different headlines that we're using. We add in a checkbox to say whether we've used it or not. And then let's just say for this one in here, it was producing a low result. We could write after 30 days, we got a low score. So we know to not use that one again. So by setting up a Google Sheet or it could be a spreadsheet on your computer, it's an easy way for you to be able to track in your Performance Max campaigns which headlines you've used before and what are some new headlines that you can use and you want to split test. So make sure that you're always going through that process of running different split tests for your search campaigns and your Performance Max campaigns. And while split testing your ads is a highly important optimization step that you need to be completing for both your search and your Performance Max campaigns, that's not the only optimization action that you need to undertake. So to help you with this, I wanna give you access to my free Google Ads optimization checklist for my search campaigns and also my Google Ads e-commerce optimization checklist, which you can use for your Performance Max and also your shopping campaigns. And if you wanna get free access to one of those tools right now, all you need to do is to follow that link in the description below. Thank you for joining me. My name is Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy and I'm your 15,000 hour Google Ads master. And right now, if you wanna learn more about optimizing your search campaigns in 2023, just go through and watch this video right here. Or if you'd like to know more about how you can optimize and increase the performance of your Performance Max campaigns in 2023, go through and watch this video right here. Thank you for joining me. See you next time.